Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to the Blue Balls podcast. Another day, another week, another episode for you guys. You want a consistency? Here is consistency. You can't find it on the pitch with Chelsea, but you can find it with us. So we are here, um, ready to go. Lots to talk about um, as usual. Before we get started though, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsors, Match Bingo. Guys, if you watch this channel, you must know Match Bingo are by this point. But if you haven't, I will quickly explain, okay? It's bingo with a twist. Uh, you play with uh, things that happen in a match rather than numbers. So it would be goals, assists, and corners taken in a match, for example. Scratch off your lines. The more lines you scratch off, the more money you make. Um, last week, Kev's mate T won 125 quid. Is there anyone this week? Has anyone done well? Yeah, my boy Max. You actually messaged me the other day saying you want a bit of money as well, man. Want a quick little pinky for anyone not in London? Uh, pinky's fifty pound. So you want a bit of money, man? You want a bit of money? I I'm yet to play. I can't even lie to you, Alex. But I think I'm gonna have to have to jump on it, boys. Bro, can't lie. On, people man. are winning money, man. You got T. You got Max. Boy, who's next? Who's next, man? That's it, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's only two quid, guys. Um, obviously, you've got to be over 18 as well. So if you're not over 18, I'm sorry. But if you are, jump on, guys. Download the link is in the description. If you use our link, it lets Match Bingo know that we're helping out as well. And obviously, it helps the channel. OK, um, so, yeah, let's get straight into it. Um, listen, Kev, always a pleasure, my friend. Good to see you as always. And Don's screen has gone off. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Back. Yeah. How are you doing, Kev? I'm I'm great. I'm great. Uh, coming off a very good midweek, well, start of the week win. Um, had it down as a draw. We've got to drop the results and all the shit I've been giving Modric, he, he, he seems to be tying up the last three weeks, doesn't he, Modric? So, by playing to him, hopefully he can continue it into the Leicester game. Um, looking forward to that game coming down to the bridge for the first time in two years. So I'm looking forward to coming down and uh, spending some time down in London. But yeah, um, positive. Um, hopefully we can get through this Leicester game and just uh, go through the next three games after that because all winnable games. Um, Burnley United and Sheffield United, all winnable games. So can we go on a... We've been saying all, all, all season, can we go on a run? But this is actually a decent little bit of... Uh, decent games we can go ahead with and, and get some form. So fingers crossed we can... Bring some, bring some wins under the table, yeah. Just, 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 just one thing, Kel. I know you live up in Stoke, but two years is a long time, mate, to not go to the bridge. Two, two years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two years. Yeah, you're like quite a bit. What was taking you so long, Kev? I just, I, I just don't rate the atmosphere there. I was, I was. I haven't been asked of it to be fair, but I've just I just decided to go with the northern games. I said, you know what, I'm just low on the bridge. But the last game I went to was in 2001, and I thought, you know, the atmosphere was dead. So I thought, he said, you know what, I'm I literally just going to do all the way games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 2021. Sorry, what am I about? 2001. Yeah, 2001. I know, mate. I know. Yeah, so I just, I just said, you know, I said, you know what, I'm just going to um. Just gonna allow it and just and just do all the northern games, but there's been an opportunity for me to come down on Sunday. I've got the got the weekend off work, so I thought you know what, I'll take up on it and come down and you know uh, it's a quarter final the FA Cup, so it's a, it's a pretty pretty big game. So why why not? Fair play. I mean, yeah. I mean, Dan, are you going to that game? Have you managed to get a ticket yet? No, I'm not. I'm not there, mate. I'm not in the country for the game. So, oh, um, America, yeah, I might miss it. Actually, I might be on a plane, which is a bit annoying. But uh, I might, I might get a few minutes on the runway or something like that in the first half. So, yeah, a bit gutted. I'm missing it to be honest because we finally sort of put together um, a good performance. But do you know what? I, and I know this sounds bad as we're here to talk about football, but it was nice to have that nine day break between the games and. Uh, not have to stress too much because Pochettino has been doing my head in recently. So it was good to have a break and kind of watch some other football that I enjoyed and just chill out away from Chelsea. And then we come back to a a good result of three points and 
start the week off nicely, whether or not I'm happy with how we played really is a different story. It's always going to be that under Pochettino. But yeah, good way to start the week after a nice break from Chelsea. I think as well, especially when you look talk about Champions League football, we were talking about the Champions League games um, before we started recording. And uh, I, I mean, I, I've been saying I can't watch it. You know, it feels weird not seeing Chelsea in these games. Like, and I can't get into it because we have nothing to do with that competition. We've got no European football whatsoever. So I kind of understand a lot of um, mid-table clubs and their fan base, you know, because they never really, I, I, I find that I don't really get into conversations with those people regarding the Champions League. There's not like a massive interest. Obviously, people watch it for entertainment, but if your team's in the competition, it just means that much more, right? So if if I'm Man City, then I'll, I'll want to watch Arsenal because we might end up playing them at some point. Um, but it's just nothing. There's just nothing. And, uh, oh, mate, I'll be honest, another year out of Europe next season, oh, I don't know what what I'm going to do, to be honest with you. I mean, how do you feel about it, Don? Boy, like you said, bro, listen, Champions League is missing us right now, man. Missing us, to be fair, and Liverpool. As much as I don't like Liverpool, it just hasn't felt the same. It has not felt the same, man. Man City and Arsenal, you know, Man City are building a little bit of European heritage right now, but Arsenal, we know what they are in Europe. I know they won yesterday, but just about scraped it against Paul at home on penalties. Do you know what I'm saying? So... We need to get back in there, man, because honestly, when it comes to Champions League nights at the bridge, I've never been. I've actually never been Champions League at the bridge. It's definitely something that I want to do um, going forward. You know what I'm saying? Dortmund last year was obviously rocking um, with that shit squad, shit team. We still managed to go through, you know, Real Madrid, I'm guessing, was was probably the same as well. Nah, Um, I'll tell you what, Madrid was all... I thought Madrid, after that Dortmund performance from the fans, I thought Madrid was poor, man. Was it? I, I thought, yeah, do you know what? we got up for that Dortmund healthy. game so much more. I think, yeah, we did. I think by that point, Lampard had already killed all of our hopes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He killed our hopes because we we played them. Um, we played them away first, didn't it? We played them at home. No, we yeah, played we them played at home away first. first. We played them. Away yeah, we played first, them away first. Yeah, because my yeah my cousin actually. Gallag- I don't know. Home. Connor Gallagher started somewhere in the squad, and it was like, oh, this is it. I think he was. Like, it was. The only it started. He started. He started like centre forward, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. He had Kante we playing right, right wing. <laughs> <laughs> the guy had Kante playing right wing. It was crazy stuff, man. But yeah, yeah. man, we need to we need to obviously get back in into Europe. But obviously, we'll speak about what we can hopefully do to get back in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to get into, guys. Um, where where do we start? Where do we start? I'm I'm, I'm going to throw the question out. What 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 is it you boys want to talk about? Because we said before, I know what I want to talk about with you, Alex. How are you not, still pushing? Not no, yeah. no, 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 no. Do you know what? Let's let, let, let's. I think I've got I've got I've got a perfect way to start. I've got a perfect way. I've got a perfect way to start in it. Let's let's get it out of the way. Let's talk about the game. How we thought the game went, yeah. Alex. How, how do you how do you think the game went against Newcastle? You know, I um, I agree with both sides. I think that I actually think it was a good performance, right? I really do. Um, but I think the way we managed the game was 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 quite poor in the second half. Um, I didn't really like the way that Pochettino changed things up. I think we invited the pressure, but we tend to do that quite a lot. Um, but then again, you know, the people go, well, hang on, well, how can you still support a manager that, that that is making these mistakes? I believe that you need time to get over those mistakes. I don't know if you guys remember when Arteta was at Arsenal. There's a famous video of troops. Um, I think it was in the Europa League when uh, Arteta subbed off Aubameyang for Willian and there was a massive rage about it. And just, yeah. just silly decisions that you see from managers. And I think um, I think Poch still needs to get to know this team, man. I really do. And I think we're only starting to understand why Modric hasn't been starting games and why other players have been playing in certain positions or not playing. Um, and... You know, time will tell, you know. There's a lot of people trying against Pochettino. I've got, I've got no problem with it, right? I don't have a problem with it. I'm not one of these people who goes, oh, you shouldn't be Poch out. Like, I get that argument. I totally get it. Um, But I could justify a lot of things about why he should stay as well. The only difference between my argument and other people's is I am looking at the future, right? And everyone else is looking at what's already happened. So, of course, you never know what's going to happen in the future, uh, but if you look at Pochettino's CV, if you look at genuine processes that have worked, 
and we've never really tried one. And I think if we if we do put all of our eggs into that process, um, I don't see it being a massive failure. Do I think that we're going to be like Abramovich for the next 20 years and win the most trophies in, in England? No. But I think we can still solidify ourselves as a top team in England. And if we back this guy, then we've got a chance. You know, I think it really last this season was year one of the process for me. Because we got rid of the deadwood that didn't want to be here. A chance or at what, paper. Alex? Honestly, a chance. A at chance what? of what? Winning yes, trophies. See, a chance. Of, he don't win trophies. On what evidence? Yeah. But but this is this is where again I don't believe Poch is the guy to bring us the Premier League. I don't believe he's that guy. But I believe he's the guy to bring us back into the fold where other managers would then be interested to take on that job and give us the next step. Right. So that and that's, that's he's never been my he's that's old old already a couple of times. Yeah, we're 11th and it's folded already a couple of times. You know, Gary Neville's folded, not in the fold. For me, you can't, oh, judge, you can't judge over <laughs> half a season. You've got to judge over a full season. Oh, if we come get on, Europe, come on, Alex, if, if we get Europe, right, I'm going to sit on it and say, I fucking told you. I fucking told you, give this man some time. Told us what? Europe, Europe is the minimum you, expectation you, when you spend the amount of money time. that Chelsea have and Alex, our Chelsea Alex, football Alex, club. Alex, guys, Alex, if he doesn't told get us Europe what? We all thought we should get if, Europe with this squad at the start of the season, Alex. If, if we you said top four. four. You literally said top four. I won't defend him. I won't defend him, right? If there's a chance, I'm going to back the guy. There's no point of sacking him at this point in time. We all agree on that. And if they want to bring in, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I do not agree. I'll sack him tonight, yeah, mate. I think we're eight weeks this, too this late. This would be. This would be. This would be the, the not the time to sack him right now, as he speaks. If we was gonna, if we were to sack him, we should have sacked him a few weeks ago. No, if we beat Leicester on on Sunday, we're in the semi final of the cup. Uh, we've still got European competitions to play for, so it's too late now. I think we should just go ahead with what we we'll go ahead of him until the end of the season. It'd be, yeah. it'd be stupid to second now. What is the point? And who are we going to bring you? Might, you who might win the one? FA Cup rather exactly. than bottle it. Exactly. That's yeah. what the point yeah. is, Ken. Let me, let me also put this we ain't gonna get, we're, we're 11th, discussion. yeah? And every time we win a game, we stay in 11th or 10th. We don't move. Right. We're that yeah. far off it, yeah? We're that far out of the picture. We ain't okay. moving. We ain't moving up the league. We ain't getting Europe through the Premier League, right? So right. the only way we get it is by winning the FA Cup. And Pochettino no. doesn't do that. And if, if he does, no, no, no. You can if you get enough. to if you get to the final. If you get to the final, right, and the team that you play against is in the top four, you still get your Europa League. Yeah, watch room. Wolves win it. Watch Wolves win it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why we're still saying ifs and maybes yeah. and this yeah, yeah. and that because end of the day, that's all we've been doing all season. Me, I've stopped yeah. doing that. Yeah, a few weeks right. ago, I, I came on here. What two weeks ago? I said, listen, we've got um, Brentford coming up, who are a mess right now. Yeah, we've got Newcastle after that, and that's we've got Burnley after that. Yeah, and I expect nine points out of all of them. Yeah, he's failed already because we drew last week against Brentford. Yeah, he failed. We should have beaten Brentford. Yeah, and when he finally decided to be a little bit braver, we should have won that game. Do you know what I'm saying? We should have won that game. And yesterday, Gary Neville literally said it, Alex. I know you keep talking about the the players, and you don't think that they're good enough or whatever, bro. Well, actually, that, that, team, that, was... that team, that team that we put out yesterday, that attack, arguably was our best attack. It had Sterling on the left. It had Jackson up top. It had Cole Palmer right mid. It had Gallagher meant to be playing in a 10. And no one can tell me he's not in our strongest 11 right now because the whole narrative every se this season has been, he's been our best midfielder, apparently. Mm. You know, he's Poch's guy. And on right? form, and he, and... probably get in as well. He's been putting up some numbers recently, hasn't he? So... Yeah, exactly. And then you've got Enzo and Caicedo behind him, right? So yeah. I can't watch yesterday and, and start talking about the owners again and talking about the players again because that team was more than good enough to perform better than that. But it didn't perform well. Because it was a game of ping pong, and the reason why it was a game of ping pong is because he had a he had a ten, yeah, a ten. By the way, Gallagher's not a ten for me, but he had, a, he had an attacking midfielder playing left wing, and Sterling pressing from the front. I don't know what the hell he was doing because there was a massive hole in the midfield, and that is down to the manager. And these are the things that we're talking about tactically. This guy is not it. I don't I don't understand. Like, there's so many mistakes that he's made, and you're still trusting him to to lead this because of his, his of his past and his CV. To me, that's crazy, bro. We're also you know, talk about, talk about, talk no, about what he's done at Chelsea. What he's done at Chelsea is not good enough because, bro, I, I've told you already a million and one times, I wanted Poch for the exact reasons that you're talking about. But those reasons mean nothing to me no more. 
They mean nothing because I've given him more than enough time to show me something. And he's made mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. So I don't know why you keep trusting him or you even trust him with, with more players in his team, bro. It, it, it's, it's crazy to me, right? Pochett well, Pochettino, thought... Pochettino, if this was Pep, for example, and Pep somehow had our team in 11th, then maybe I'll be like, listen, this is still Pep in it. Let's let's see. It's it's Poch, man. Who yeah, is when Poch? Has Poch? When has Poch ever been at a top team and been in this mm -hmm. position? This is what I'm saying. If, if this, if we had better players that were ready to win right at this moment, because again, people take my words out of context when I say our players are rubbish. I'm not saying they're going to be rubbish forever. I'm just saying for what people are expecting this season, they're bums. It's so what truth. we can't, we can't, we can't expect, we can't expect to dominate the ball yesterday or the mid, with, with, yesterday, sorry, the other day with the team that we had out. Because start of the season, Alex. Start, start of the season. No, but you're you're saying that. Um, uh, what, did you, what did you say? Sorry, said about signing about bums. Nothing to do with my argument. I'm I'm just saying that I don't think the players have what it takes right now to achieve the results that people are asking for. I'm not talking about possession or or tactics. Yeah, but, or but bro, come on, you, come on. Yeah, but that's how you're going to you achieve you the results. Yes, but you need to. You, the squad needs to get to know each other. The players need to get to know each other. They need to get to know the manager, right? You don't look. Let's let's get this first thing clear. The players are playing for the manager. That's number one. We know that for a fact. Okay? I'd actually agree with that. Yeah. That's yeah, they are. Yeah, he they hasn't are lost players, the man. because he's, he's he Mr. Nice guy, isn't he? He's Mr. Nice guy. Okay, so. But, uh, but this is the other thing, right? So you could you could have said the same thing about Potter. You could have said the same thing about other people. Oh, he's a yes man. He's a nice guy. They lost the dressing. Potter lost the dressing room. Frank Lampard never had it to begin with because it was fucked from the beginning when he took over, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, Potter's done a good job of of gaining the respect of his players in that sense. But that's that's his main quality. We all agree on that. Man management is Potch's main quality. Um, the way he manages individuals, the way he's able to manage a team in that sense. I don't think there's ever too much discontent uh, with that side. The the thing that people talk about is tactics. And again, I have not defended Pochettino's in-game management. It's not been great, right? I do think that actually we set up quite well quite a lot of the time. Um, and I think that people overlook that. But we end up shooting ourselves in the foot with some of the changes we make. Now, I do want to just ask to you guys this. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say a couple of players, okay? Just just players that that um, I can think of off the top of my head: uh, Petrovic, Kukurea, uh, Malogusto, Alfie Gilchrist, Carney Chukwemeka, Caicedo, Gallagher, Mudrich, and Nicholas Jackson and Cole Palmer. Would you not agree with me that all of these players? have developed under Pochettino. And I know put, put Cucurea in there. The reason I said that is because I actually think he's a lot better this season than last season. That would show me this development. Um, now, that's a decent amount of people, right? I'm not talking about one or two players. I'm not just saying, oh, look at Cole Palmer. He's balling now. It's actually a decent amount of players that you say, actually, they're a lot better than last season. And that shows me a progression. And that's where... I do see a reason to back Poch because you're seeing individual players getting better. The team as itself isn't at the level it has been, um, but we are getting better. We are making steps forward. We and, are 11th, um, bro. Yes, and I believe that we will climb up and I believe that next season will be even higher. I think if you bring another manager, we're not going to fucking change, Don. Alex, the, Alex the, the, the thing is, yeah, listen, uh, you can't change Poch. This is Poch. This is what he is, right? So this is Spurs, Poch, Spurs fans. Spurs fans were saying the exact same thing that we're saying now. Yeah, I saw a tweet the other day from a Spurs fan back in 2016, I think it was. And a guy literally tweeted yeah, and said, is this guy just going to have us running around or are we actually going to create some tactics to create better, right? That's in 2016. PSG fans were saying the exact same thing about this guy. Even before he came to Chelsea, one of the biggest concerns that people had was how he, how he comes up against low blocks. The guy just isn't it tactically, bro. And in this day and age, in, in the time that we're in, we're not in the time of, you know, just, uh, you know, arm around players and whatnot. You need a manager that knows what they're doing with the players that they've got. And for me, I think Poch is a mismatch with the players that we've got, right? He can he might be able to do a better job somewhere else, you know, with, with players that suit his style of play. But this is a mismatch. You know, like when you put oil in water, yeah, and the oil is at the top and it's just not, it's not combining together. That's Poch. Poch is the oil, Chelsea are water. It doesn't go well together. Yeah, it does not go well together. And the way you're defending him and still hoping that he comes but good, they're, 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 I'm sorry, bro. Poch, Poch is not that guy to be hoping and praying because I've seen too many basic... That's the key word here. Every manager makes mistakes. Pep makes mistakes. 
are, you know, Klopp makes mistakes. I'm not saying that managers are perfect, even though they're world-class, but it's the level of basic mistakes the guy's made, yeah. the amount of basic mistakes he's made. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 for, and, and consistently as well. Consistently. Throughout the whole season, bro, I've been saying, insanity, bro. Is the same doing the same thing and expecting different results. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. how how long how long does it take? How long does it really take to understand that something didn't work? Most managers will see something didn't work in one game. The following game they they change it and you see a difference. Yeah, and normally it's a, it's a positive difference. Poch doesn't see anything good. He'll come out and say the performances are good, and he'll go with the same thing again the following week, bro. And he'll go with the same thing again the following week. And we're playing. Well, ask players to do the same I, 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 thing I, I, as well. I, 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 it just it, it, that's, that's, a tiny bit delusional because he did come out in the press conference and says he's backing, he, he's kind of seen the improvement, he's happy with the improvement. That's what he quoted, quoted saying. I'm happy. What improvements has, have we really seen though? Because defensively, well, we're still making the same errors. I think in one part of the game against Newcastle, we actually passed it across the, you know, the, the back line where I mean, the goal line, we literally passed it across the back line. I have never seen Chelsea or any team pass it across the back line. So we was just inviting pressure. So what this this pass out the back football is like he's he's telling the players to do it on, on a weekly basis. It hasn't worked, it's not going to work. We haven't got the players to do it. So why does he continue to still play this style of football? And then he comes out and says that he's seen the improvement. So that kind of got me like, huh? What improvements have we seen? Because throughout the season. We have made the continuous same errors of, of corners, same errors of crosses, um, playing at the back football, inviting pressure to ourselves every single week. So if he's seen improvements, that, that scares me, Alex. You know, and I, like I said, I was posh out anyway from the Minnesota game, but I kind of like from the Villa game, I kind of started saying, you know what, coming back towards the ski from the end of the season. But when he comes out and says that he, he he's seen he's happy with improvements, I'm like, come on, brother, what improvements? Us fans can't see improvements. Like we're still in the level of playing. Based on last season, Kev. Bro, and anything was better than last season. But last okay. season, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but Alex, you can't, you can't. This is what I'm saying. You can't use that context, bro, because it's last not season, the same squad. bro, it's exactly. It's not even the same squad. That's number one. Yeah, last season was it was that's, a squad. That's, that's even yeah, but let, let me let my point. The, the squad that we've got right now is a lot better than the squad that we had last season. Yeah, and the goals okay, that we scored bro. this season, yeah, of course it is, bro. Of course no, it is. No, it isn't, bro. I can no, argue that this. I can, I, I can. I can argue our midfield is better than last season on paper. Yeah, but Ko Kovacic is Enzo was great. Is 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 it was Kovacic creative? Was he even good last season? Because he was no, he was crap most of the season. Bro. Good last season when he when he he's when he came when he when he came back from the World Cup, yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Maybe the fact that these guys, maybe the, the fact that these guys wanted to leave. Yeah. A lot of these guys mm -hmm. wanted to leave. Their head was already out of the door. Yeah. They weren't. They yeah. weren't. Havertz kept mi missing a million and one chances. You had Graham Potter playing Sterling as a number nah, nine. They saw the club transforming, Don, didn't they? And they were like, "Get me out, man. This is bad." Yeah. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah. so for me oh, right yeah. now, yeah. For, for me, Alex, yeah. The improvements that you're hanging on to is because of how bad we was last season. We've been bad this season, yeah. Yeah, but, but no, last season, last season. That's what yeah, I but bro, last I'm season we saying. we finished we finished twelfth and we are now eleventh. And when you when you I'm mentioned tripping. earlier, you finished um when you mentioned earlier about Poch improving players, yeah. For me, the only person that is really improved, in my opinion, is Gallagher because Palmer was already balling out at Man City. Because if you go back to what I said on the terrace when we signed him in the summer, I said this is a serious signing. Yeah, the guy was already a baller. Gusto yeah, was yeah. already a baller. Yeah, Petrovic was already a solid keeper. If you go go back to summer and see what Brad Fried was said about him because he's he's American. Obviously, he watches MLS and whatnot. He said, bro, Chelsea, he'll be Chelsea's number one in no time. That's these players' individual quality, bro. When I talk about improvements, I see I see that he's improved Gallagher. I see that Jackson, okay, cool. Jackson's improved during the season. I don't I don't see him improving Mudrick, in, in my opinion, because Mudrick had Mudrick, Mudrick has had more game time than last season, but I still I still saw I still saw have Mudrick have good parts last season. The only thing, only difference is Mudrick wasn't getting that much game time last season. Difference is this year, he's getting more game time, but he's still not playing as much as he needs to be playing, is the point that I'm making. I don't really, I, like, I see Mudrick playing better than last season, but I don't think that's on Poch, in my opinion. I think, I think if anything, Poch is holding him back. I think Poch is holding him back, bro, in my opinion. Improving right. someone, improving someone isn't playing them one game, seeing them doing well, and then dropping them, bro. That is, that is not improving the player. I'm so sorry. 
Yeah, that is not improving the player. Yes, Modric might have had better performances than, in comparison to last year, yeah, but, but then, he's, but then he still drops him. But then he still drops him. Yeah, there's a reason Modric doesn't start. I mean, your Poch obviously doesn't trust him defensively. I don't trust Modric defensively, to be honest with you. Oh, it's how not just say, how, come on. How it's how not can just you say, Alex, his defensive abilities, you... is it? Like Modric hasn't been good enough for the majority of the season, whether he's had ten minutes or nine. Or nah, he's nah, barely nah, had nah, a ninety. Nah, to be fair, no, he's had but... he's had some really. Is that, good is that, is that, is that good moments in games, man? I can think of a few examples. Palace. Oh, I can think of game. three games, mate. Palace. Uh, yeah, but that's because he's better. Half and the Newcastle yeah, but... substitute appearance. Yeah, but Dan, Dan, he's literally had two ninety minutes. Yeah, Berlin's had more better, like more games at a better level than Mudrik's had all season. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but he's a better player than him, though, isn't he? Yeah, that's you what I'm the... saying. That's why Mudrik ain't starting. Yeah, but Sterling's yeah. still inconsistent, though. Uh, so why? Does yeah, he, I, I don't why does disagree. The whole squad's inconsistent, playing? man. Like the whole. The thing, squad the, thing, the thing in Mudrik is now, though, he's starting to improve, and that's coming from me. That's coming from me. I know I haven't had a good thing to say about Modric since he came to Chelsea, but the last few games I've seen him play, he's starting to get his confidence back. But he's staying to the manager, and this is where we go back to Posh again. I don't want to go back to him, because like I said, I'm bored of talking about him. <laughs> he needs more game time. If you see a player who's crying out for starts, he's having a bit of confidence, he's got a goal, I'm thinking, Modric, I'm thinking Posh is going to jump him against Leicester. I don't think he's going to start against Leicester. No, nah, no, nah, he'll think, start, he'll start, he'll start. He'll start. Kev, let me ask you a question, yeah, because Alex, you, Alex, you know, Alex, you know. Alex flagged him. Alex flagged him as a player that Poch has improved. Do you think Poch has improved him, in your well, opinion? Well, Modric, Modric. Yeah. No, nah, I'm asking Kev, I'm asking Kev. He hasn't done anything different to what he's done last season, bro. Of course oh, he has. <laughs> He's no. just he's just had more he's just had more game. No, the difference, Alex, the difference this season, the, the reason why you think Poch has improved him is because no, he's had more no, no, no. he's had more it's, game it's, time this again, season. Again, it's again, no, I, it's, I actually didn't use the word improve. What I said is these players have developed under Pochettino. That's what yeah, that's I said. improved though. That's improved. That's, that's he's improved them. They have developed. Wait, are we saying Pochettino is improving these players, or what, what's the difference between what, yeah, what is, what, what, What's the point? What's the point? What's the point you're making, Alex? Okay, I okay. Hear. I'm <laughs> saying based on what we had last season. And, and the players that have come in as well, okay? Uh, I'll name them again, just to be clear, all right? Petrovic, Kukurea, Uh No, let's go through them slower. Let's go through them slower, because, like, let's make a point on these, because Petrovic okay, okay. has Petrovic, nothing I'll changed. With... He's still the same guy Petrovic. we signed. I'll start this with Petrovic. His ability. Petrovic has come in, and under Pochettino, he's our starting goalkeeper, and he's performing. Yeah, but right? he hasn't changed. He's mate. still the same guy we signed. What's improved? Is kicking still diabolical that we literally have to change our system when he's in goal? You know the only person... Like, Sanchez come player. back in, who Sorry. apparently can play with his feet, and we went straight back to playing out from the back. We tried it against Newcastle. It looked horrific. We we literally were playing into Newcastle's hands. Petrovic's kicking is so bad. I don't think Pochettino has improved anything. And the amount of manager works with a goalkeeper anyway... I, I I wouldn't even give Poch credit if any development's been made. Mm. I'd give it to the goalkeeper no, team. Then, guys, guys, you're Pet, reading Pet, into is the same player that came in. I agree with that. Much. All right, and, and, and Gallagher, not, for example, the reason why I say it. Gallagher, the reason why I say Gallagher's improved as well, Alex. Yeah, yeah? Gallagher. Gallagher, Gallagher had a lot of game time last season, but he was crap. Yeah, this season he's had a lot of game time, but you can see that he's improved. That is what yes. you call an improvement. A clear yeah, I'd improvement. give you credit on that. I'd give you credit on Connor. That's what definitely. I'm saying. I think kind of against Newcastle though, and mate, it was just running. Yeah, that's, that's, what was, that's, that's what he was, that's what he was asked yeah, to do, Kevin. Yeah, I can't remember touching the ball much. But Kevin, that's what he was asked to do. And, 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 yeah, and even like, for Mudrich's goal, bro, he was occupying his face, and Mudrich literally had to set the ball because if. If Mudrick never got the ball of Gallagher, we would not have got that goal. No, you, what you, it tells me, right, Kev, actually, you're actually Gallagher. making a really good point there. You are making a good point. Like, it tells me that, and this is this is perfect, it sets up so perfectly to show us that Pochettino isn't advising these players what they should be doing, what areas they should be normal. picking up the ball, getting it's on the ball. Normal. It's literally the player's instinct. Mudrick and Connor both read that situation exactly the same, that this ball is going to go here from Jackson. Let's get on it. And they both arrived exactly the there's, same there time. The ten. Pep the and, ten. and Arteta <laughs> and all the top managers, they're yeah. telling their players to occupy different spaces. Pochettino doesn't give us any instructions in the final third. It's so evident to see. He just lets the players decide what happens on instinct. Because as a player, he had no attacking intelligence whatsoever. And it's not developed as a manager. 
He's relied on a top striker. I've said this point before. He's relied on a top striker everywhere he's been. Southampton, he relied on a striker. Man, uh, Spurs, he relied on Harry Kane to do the business. PSG, he relied on Mbappe. Any player yeah. that comes in, he, he, the, he normally almost ruins one or two in a team as well. Look at what he did to Messi. DM, you know, played him as a DM. Yeah, yeah no, I, 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 Honestly, we've had these chats so many times. Yeah, I, I, I don't like think it. it's fair to say he's developed many players at all because I ain't seen that much improvement. We're sat in 11th. Right. I know it's a different squad, but where we've it. signed all these players from, Enzo's a worse player. Casado's a worse player than last season. Go yep. through the back four. Half of them players are worse than last season. Gusto's better, to be fair. I'd say Kukurea is better, actually. But I don't know if that's down to Poch because he still keeps making the same mistake where he tries to intercept a pass and get in turn. Mm. He made it against Newcastle at the weekend. Jackson, he scored the same amount of goals as he did last season for Villarreal. So there's no difference yeah, there. Cole Palmer was already the bollocks of Man City different. just couldn't it get in the different. team. I'll tell you why. Because it's Raheem Chelsea, Sterling's right? not any better. Raheem Sterling's the still a pile of crap for the amount of money. Oh, no, he's I on. hate Sterling. He's crap. Yeah, but um, that's what I'm saying. Alex, give me a player mm -hmm. that he's improved. It's Gallagher, Alfie bro. Gilchrist, he, he has not? not got it, by the way. He's such developed, a limited player. Developed, guys. Developed not... what? What do you Gallagher, mean Gallagher. developed? He's the one that integrated Alfie Gilchrist into the squad. If, no, no, no. He's, 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 he's got any better. Really, he's just he's, he's got injuries and players that cannot stay fit. Alex, 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 Before we move on, before we move on, developments... It was Harry Kane when he came in and he went in goal for Tottenham in the Europa League to the play he is now. That's yep. the belly pin player. Yeah, facts. Right now, facts. I can't see what he's done with one of our players which can, can spring Apart to Apart from Conor Gallagher, Gallagher, I'll give you credit not on that. Even, not, credit even credit on that not even Conor yeah. Gallagher. Not nah, Gallagher. Nah, Gallagher. Nah, Gallagher's improved. Nah, he's a man. He's, he, he is, he is. He's well, that's, improved that's, in a tiny bit. Yeah, but that's because... Yeah, he's improved him. Yeah, he has. He's, and you know what? If likes. he hasn't improved him as a player, he's improved his mentality and a, as a leader and as a captain. Because I'll tell you what, when Connor got the armband back compared to Chile, you notice a difference straight away. Oh, and Chile, get, get that. We might as well move on to transfers now, boys. Because yeah, 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 I'll yeah, happily yeah, chat about transfers. Yeah, yeah. Oh you know, we, saw, we, saw the, we saw the news earlier, Alex, about the, the left backs. Chelsea apparently right now looking at, at left backs. Chile, this guy's got, got a goal now, lads. What are you guys saying? <laughs> I, 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 if we get the right price, then then um, I haven't got a problem with it, you know. And to Bro, be honest, you ain't buying like, a broken honestly... mirror from a shop, though, are you? Do you know what, what I mean? You ain't gonna walk into a shop, and if a mirror's Just... broke, you're not gonna buy it. Uh, well, there's there's clubs out there that do. I mean, um, we'll see. I suppose it depends. Can't on fit, you know what? Let me put it like this: Key Carella had a better game against Newcastle than Joe. Hey, Cook has been oh, half decent under Poch. This is what I'm saying. Like, this, this what, Joe, what, Joe, what? I, I was kind of like, yeah, this is last, Joe was last time. And, he, and he's lost in four games again and he's gone off. <laughs> He's injured for another three weeks. Oh, oh it's so bad. It's, 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 it's actually, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace that we gave him a new contract. Four games, it's actually true. It's actually, it's, Alex, it's actually a disgrace that we gave Chiwo a new contract. Knowing his injury record. Bro, he's on about 200k a week or something like that. Who the hell is buying that, man? It don't and, matter and, what and he's on. Is, it doesn't even he, matter he, what he's on. It's what. It's he, just the fact we gave him a contract he, when he man. cannot... Yeah, yeah. Him. And you know what really annoys me about Chihuahua? Yeah, listen, he was good in the Champions League running and obviously yeah. um, most of our, our um, creativity was coming from him and Reese James, yeah? But this the way this club, these owners, I don't know, the way they treat him, the way I feel like the club treats him, because it came out the other week that they, um, they're looking to sell Cucurella before him. I'm thinking, no. bro, no, who, is, who is... I'm thinking, I've seen who, that. I'm thinking, who the hell do they think Chilwell is to be, you know, planning to keep him in what we're trying to do going forward? Like, if you've been watching what he's been doing in comparison to what Gusto does on the other side, I yeah. keep telling you, look, that left-hand side is grenade football. And he the, the grenade starts from him because he just loses it or he'll give it to Sterling and the grenade blows up with Sterling as well. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that left-hand side stinks, mm -hmm. yeah? And the quicker we get rid of Chilwell, the better we'll kick on. Because the guy can't stay fit. He's not going to get any better from what we've seen. Like I said to you last, last week on the last pod that we did, even his final ball's not the same. Even the way he strikes the ball it's in front of goal. Nah, it's not it's the same. Juventus game when he got injured last season. Don't think he's been the same since. Bro, nah. last season, nah, you know what? Last season when he came back season? from injury, last season when he came back from injury, he was actually he was actually good. He was actually good. But now he kind of just reminds me of them guys on the block. Kev, you know the guys oh, on the block, yeah? 
them guys living yeah. on the block that are in their thirties and they're still trying to chill with the, with the eighteen year olds and the nineteen year olds. And that. That's what chill reminds yeah. me of. He's sticking yeah. around with the young G's and he's and he's, yeah. he's past it. You know what I'm saying? It's time for you to. It don't, it don't look. It don't look fit. He needs to go and make. He basically needs to go and start a family and get married to this. Yeah, but it's, it's time. It's time to now go. It's time to now go. You know, maybe go back to Leicester if they get promoted. Yeah. Go back over there and, it, bro, I'm telling you now, Alex. Here, when this guy leaves Chelsea, you're gonna see where he ends up. He's not gonna go to Man City. He's not gonna go Arsenal. He's not gonna go to any of the top teams. He's gonna go down. Yeah, and guys wanna keep this guy. We need. To go and buy it and you left back. You see Kukurea, yeah? yeah. If Kukurea leaves, he'll go. He could go better than Chelsea eventually. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so I actually great. think there's a player in there. We saw it at Brighton. We're seeing it in drips and drabs at Chelsea, but we can all agree that this season he's been far better and defensively he's been solid. He's just got that habit where he tries to always get in front of his man. But right now, if if you had Kukurea as your second option as a left back, I think we'd all settle for that. It's just actually finding someone that. Oh. So, up, he, he, he would, obviously, we've been linked to his, um, a couple of left backs, one of them being Alfonso Davis, which I can't see. Happening. Never, we're never getting um, him. Yeah, he, he's meant to be one of the top targets, um, from next season. But if it wasn't, for, was it him? Who would be your main target for a left back? Um, uh, who, who would you bring in if you had the opportunity to, to do business? Now for me, Kev. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'll br I'm bringing in Kirkes, bro. Kirkes at Bournemouth. From, uh, Bournemouth. Yeah, Kirkes. My, okay. Milos Kirkes from, from Bournemouth. Kirkes. I think that's how you pronounce his surname. Yeah. Kirkes, bro. Th this guy, yeah, every time I've watched him, every time man, I've watched he's him, all right. he's impressed me, man. I can't lie. He's I like, 20 I like, years old. I, like, I don't want to go back to Brighton again. <laughs> yeah, Bournemouth, like Bournemouth, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Like Bournemouth. Like SB, SB Aaron, um from Brighton. Oh, um, Esther, Esther, Esther Punyan. Esther Punyan. Esther Punyan. That's an experience. I used checking his credit no, score, no, mate. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 He's an experience, though. Hey, you're killing me. You're killing me. No, 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 you see no, the number honestly, on the back no, of his no, shirt, no, no. your credit score, isn't it? Yeah, check the credit score. Yeah, no, but honestly, for me, Kirk has. Um, like I said, Davis, I think he's going to go around Madrid. Like, I, would, I would love him at the club, and he's a Chelsea fan as well. But remember how he cooked, cooked us when we had Frank Lampard, yeah, that game? Jesus oh, Christ. He was, mm. he was just up and down cooking us. Yeah, he but was unreal for, me, for the whole tournament, wasn't it? He basically won by in that, that Champions yeah, League. Yeah, 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 exactly. Time. Yeah, but for me, Kirk is, bro, like when I've watched him, I'm not going to say I've watched a lot of games, oh. but I watched him against us. I watched him the other week against Man mm. City. I've caught Bournemouth here and there, and obviously like match of the day and whatnot, yeah, here and there and stuff. I've watched enough games to say, okay, I see something. Do you get what I'm saying? But for me, bro, he, he got, he's up and down. Yeah. He's quite tall. Um, like I said, he's 20 years old. Defensively, he's good. Um, again, attacking, he's quite good. And he can invert as well. Like, I look at him and he can basically do what Gusto does, but on the other on, on the other side. And he's only going to get better. Do you know what I'm saying? Only going to get better. I don't play um, football manager, but a lot of people have said to me, like, on What's football manager, name? apparently, Milo's Kirkes. Milo's Kirkes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Hear me uh, out yeah. on this, yeah. But would oh, anyone have you? um would anyone have Emerson back over uh, over any of our left backs now? Oh, yes. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah really. I think he's been sure. decent for West Ham this season. Nah, I don't, I don't that's West Ham. That's West Ham. Back there, but I do yeah. think we've let a good player go out of what we've had. Bro, I I, I hated that guy at Chelsea. I'll be honest with you, man. He used to just what? it was like playing was like, right. it was like it was like playing with a mannequin there, bro. He used to annoy me, bro. Like. He'll do things well going forward, yeah, here and there. But then on the other side, bro, you can't defend, man. But West Ham, they play, they're, bro, they play low block. So he's got help over there. Do you know what I'm saying? Here, we ain't trying to play that sort of football. I ain't taking Emerson back, man. He'll be like Do you know who I'd take? Do you know who I'd take? Choice. Give me Inzaghi from Inter Milan and let him bring uh, DeMarco. Like, I, I feel like that guy in a back... If we went back three, I feel like he's your best left wing back in the world at the moment. I feel like he's such a threat. Mm. I'd really have him. Uh, honestly, he reminds me a bit like Marcus Alonso. They're, they're sort of similar in that sense, how they just provide so much width. But if we're not playing back three, then I wouldn't touch him. But I'd, uh, I'd definitely, I'd definitely eye him up if we ever got Inzaghi in for sure, because he's had so much mm. success with him. But so yeah, I'm, look, I'm, I hear I'm, you on the Bournemouth guy. To be fair, because I actually think he's been okay. The only oh, issue I'd have with that, right, is how how good is he? Like, and at that age, is it another young player without experience? What's yeah. the deal then? If um, if uh, Davies goes to Real Madrid, what, what's happening with Ferland Mendy? What's his situation, or is he just not at it anymore? I don't think he even starts for them, you know. To be honest, I, nah, I don't think he does. But like, would he not be good them. enough? Would you not? Would that not be an option for us to consider? 
bro, I haven't watched Mendy in a second. So I can't even... It's been a I while. Even, That's what I mean. I haven't. You know what I mean? I can't speak on him. You know what I mean? I, I've got to speak about guys that I've actually watched like that. And right now, for me, like I've said, you know, I know you said about the experience and whatnot, but look at Gusto. No, no one speaks about his age, bro. He, he gets into any every team. Years old. True, it's true. And he's only 20 years old. You know, I, I've been impressed by this Kirkus guy, honestly, man. I, you know, when you just watch a player for the first time, you're like, yo, who's this guy? Because I remember I even yeah. tweeted it, start of the season. I said, I'm definitely keeping an eye on Milos because that's what I knew him as at the beginning, Milos. He's good, bro. Yeah, if you get a chance, you know, go watch the highlights against Man City of him. This guy's a player, man. Um, there's another one as well, Robinson at Fulham. I would take him, to be fair. He's yeah, an yeah, yeah, so, so, I like so, Robinson. So. He does, he does take a lot of risks, though, mate. Like, he comes across as quite reckless. No, nah, but he's rapid, man. He gets forward. He can whip a ball in, man. He's just... Uh, there's about 20 left backs better than Banjoa right now in the Prem. No, I think no, that's no, the no, point. So I think that's so the many. point, Kevin. No, there no, is definitely quality no, out there. No, no, you could no, probably no. make a list of about 20 that could be above yeah. Ben Chilwell, I think. Yeah. But they're available. Yeah. You know, forget quality. They're they're available for selection. I mean, that makes that makes things better in mm. itself. Yeah, I mean, very true. What, what, what do you feel about Nani, Nani Madueke as well? So Nani Madueke coming out. Some news about him today. Um, Where's he going? Palace? Because he suit Palace down to the ground. In one, yeah, he does Zaha replacement. Um, in yeah, one I two, think he, I think he'll be at Palace yeah. one day. I just got a feeling. Yeah, in one and two, yeah, he does see him. You know, in, in one and two, um, to leave on loan to get more game time. What do you feel about? I don't that? mind you that at all. I think he's got a really good attitude. I think um, he he should go on loan and get game time for sure. Palace, you, you hit the nail on the head. That he should be a football um, agent. <laughs> like, oh, I can tell, see, mate. Don't worry about that. Palace, like I can see him in the back. <laughs> like. When you think of Zaha, he looks like Zaha at Tony, but like he could just slot straight in. He's right. just a so, South London yeah. street baller, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would, I would love, I would love Madwege to work out at Chelsea, man, because he's got the attributes I like him. I think he's you quality, know. man. I'd rather him work out than Mudrick. I can't even lie. Nah, nah. See, now you've got an agenda. Now you've got an nah. agenda there. I have. Oh yeah, I have for maybe. Me, I, I'd for, love for me to work out at Chelsea and be bro, real. I've got time for Madwege, yeah, but I, honestly, I think Mudrick's got a higher ceiling, bro. Yeah, really. Goal that he's go got, opposite. Yeah, I'd man. Go opposite. Nah, man. I think I think Modric's got really. high. I think Modric's got higher Modric's, potential. Modric's, bro. Modric's, Modric's got a better. I think Modric's got a better. Uh, his work rate and a better better attitude. I think Modrewake. I don't know what's going on about him. I think his attitude lets him down a slight tad. You know, he comes across. Do you know what Madueke's got? He's got a touch of the De Bruyne man. He, he knows he should be playing. I think he knows he's good enough. And like, yeah, he, his biggest problem is his is his injuries. They limit him. He's had a lot of problems with injuries throughout, but I think if Nani could get in a team and be consistent, give him, give him I think you'd see a real top player there. Who, who mm -hmm. uh, for me, I think he'd be a better player than Madrid. He, he, he was he was one of our shining lights last season. I think either him, way, you take as both actually, wouldn't you? You take. I think people forget how good Nani was last year compared to what sort of the performances yeah, that yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah, this yeah, season. Yeah. But you I, take mm. him and you take Madrid, arguably, if they could both develop and be on form, but. Yeah, well, if, like, if, if yeah, no, 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 no. I would, I would play Mudrić on the left and, and Nonny on the right every I week. Think, I think, by the way, take I think down the middle out of choice. Yeah, um, mm. yes. Or, or Chukwameka, even when he's fit as well. I love Chuk. Yeah, but that's yeah, but that's the thing though. That's the thing though, Alex. Because you're you see, you're thinking brave right now. Our manager hasn't been brave. He has not been brave, bro. Yeah, if we had a manager that was brave enough, we might have seen Mudwaki play a lot more games instead of seeing Ben Chilwell play left wing and yeah. and uh, Sterling playing right wing. You know what I mean? And wasting all those games where he was playing in there. And I remember when Mudrik came on against, uh, started against Bournemouth. The amount of chances this guy was creating, creating. That was the first game that he started, I believe. Yeah, because Chilwell kept playing at left, left, uh, left wing. You know, creating for everyone. Is that the game where he played that unreal like reverse pass? Is that that game? That was yeah, against. Um, I think your. I think that was Bournemouth, but I remember... I he, think he, he could played, have been Bournemouth. Do you played, remember he dropped off just inside the right back and yes, played that reverse yes. pass, man? It was unreal. Yes, he gave he passed it to Gallagher. Gallagher missed it from, literally, from range. Jackson hit the post from, again, Mudrik creating for him. Bro, you've just got to be brave, Alex. And listen, <laughs> you put yourself in it. This, this is a thing that I'm talking about. I would have rather yeah. gone with that. So, so with, with Nani essentially going on loan, would you think it would make sense for us to replace him with another winger? Because... We've been linked with that William Junior from Athletic or Bilbao. So getting rid of a winger on loan to bring another one in when you've probably got three or four wingers as well on loan. Are we making any sense with the transfers? Because would it make would it make sense to offload a couple first, um, then bring in some in, or do you think bringing in another winger to replace by the way, Kate, 
what, what do you feel about how do you feel uh, I think Madweki Madweki's got to stay much. because let's okay let's try break this down then so just so it makes more sense right outgoings who do we think is going to go like Sterling. Sterling. Sure. Sterling's going to go right I think no, Sterling might no, go you know. the thing is though with Sterling you got to remember he's on 320 grand a week he's living in London with all his family where he's grew up he was going to want to match those wages he puts, does he want to go to Saudi Arabia? He probably doesn't want to go over there. He just got the move to London after 10 years of being out of his city. So it's not as easy as what it looks just, just off, off, getting him gone. Yeah, but, it, so yeah, but the thing is, if the, new manager, if, if the new manager comes in and says, yo, you're not you're not playing, yeah, or like, I'm going to focus on the others, yeah. I don't see... Do you, do you think Sterling's just going to say, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to sit here then, like, yeah, because right. he's in London. Maybe Saudi mm-hmm. might offer him... 500k a week after tax, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's no tax. 500k nah, he'll, a week. He'll, he'll, he'll get more just than that, it. though. He'll get yeah. more than that. Literally. So he might just say, Do you know what? I'd be, yeah. I'd be gut if Sterling was to go to Saudi Arabia because I feel like that would be like him moving into an early retirement. I feel like it's just oh, yeah. it could have gone so much better at Chelsea than it has for him, and and that's what's so disappointing is because there's it's, it's, there's obviously a top player in there, but. He's yeah, never yeah. ever at Chelsea. It's never worked out whether or not that's been down to the manager, his attitude, whether or not he feels like the players around him are good enough, mm. whether or not he is someone who can be the main man in the team. I think that's obviously an issue. But I, I would feel a bit like it would be bittersweet that it never really worked out for me because I feel like he's such a top player. But I think ultimately when the Euros happens this year and he's not going to be in the team, I think um, that'll be when it sort of hits home for him and he'll be like, right, wh- where am I going? What am I doing with my career? Yeah, I mean, because yeah. um, he's not going. He, after that game against Newcastle with Southgate in attendance, he ain't going to be on the plane. He ain't even got a chance. No, oh, no. I mean, he hasn't. He hasn't even been in the picture. Of, he hasn't. Like, I know, but minutes, like, if he had minutes. any chance, right, that that would have been it for me. And he, he just hasn't shown up. And like, there's so many players now that are playing better than him in the same position. Um, it's uh, it's just it's just mad, isn't it, to think that we'd be talking about Raheem Sterling when what he was mm-hmm. doing like two, three seasons ago, probably three seasons ago, I'd say. This is the thing, though. Like we kind of set him up to fail because you you can't bring Raheem Sterling into a team like we was last year. You need to bring this guy into a complete team, right? That's why he yeah, works, works so well. He'd be better off going back to team. Liverpool, mate. He'd be unreal, wouldn't he? Like you could mate, see him doing I, the business. I, 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 nah, that, that, the intensity that you need over there to play. I don't even know who the new manager is. They won't even take him back. Like Sterling at Liverpool was obviously exactly. breaking through, broke through at 17. I remember they even gave him 30 grand a week at 17. This guy, this guy's got racks in his account right now. A lot of money in his account. He's been earning a lot of money from young. Yeah. When they brought him through, he was hungry, bro. He came, he wanted it. You could see it. He was fighting for it. Yeah. Went to Man City, was in that team with Pep and whatnot. Do you know what I mean? Won, won what he won. But at Chelsea, bro, like the, the team was, <laughs> the, the team was. Was yeah, the team was far from complete, and like I said, mm. we had basically no striker. We were playing Kai Havertz. Raheem Sterling's always played with a striker, someone that he can supplement. You know, he's never that guy to depend on. And I said it from when we signed him. I said, bro, if we don't buy a striker, this guy is not going to work. We bought Aubameyang, cool, but the guy never played. And look what Aubameyang's doing this season. Yeah, look bro. what he's doing guys, now. Yeah, exactly. Guys were telling me he's finished. I said, bro, he he's not nah, going to press nah. you from he the never front even the way got he a used chance, to. Man, we sat the never got a chance. To use him. Never got a chance. He came. He started against Arsenal. Um, it's just you remember that thing that he said in the in the preview about it's just business. It's not. It's not personal. Or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. And then after that, we just didn't see him again. Yeah. He scored against AC Milan. I remember oh, he scored God, against Palace. Game. I think he scored against Palace as well. That good goal in the Prem. Yeah, but that was his debut. That was his debut. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Sterling Potter was never going to work. Potter would yeah. never have a player like that around his team, though, would he? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sterling. Never. Sterling was was never going to work in the circumstance that we were in. It's a shame. It is a shame. But. We've got to move on one, man. Because I, I said start of the season, for me, it's a big one. He's our highest paid player. I, I expect a lot from him. And he has not been able to step up in a team where we need experience. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I just want to move on to uh, one other thing, guys, that I'm surprised hasn't been talked about more, in fairness, which is uh, about the Chelsea CEO, uh, Chris Jersak, uh, admitting that he views football merely as a product and fans as customers during a staff meeting. Um, And to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not even surprised, but I want to get your reactions to this, guys. And I mean, what does this mean for Chelsea? Because we've gone from having an owner 
who who cared and you could say every part of the club had a little bit of of that that sprinkle on it that the owner was trying his best to progress in some sense and it almost seems like with with what i'm hearing there you know these guys don't care about anything except the money that we can bring in from fans we're going to see season ticket prices going up uh, match day prices going up for for members um and you know as much as 20 percent apparently 20 percent increase yeah i have I've seen that. that's apparently ridiculous. so could happen well, 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 of, yeah, yeah but look Alex, imagine yeah. we finish not in europe and he up and the season tickets are up to that extent it would be a disgrace but Look, to me, and exactly what you said, I, I'm not even surprised that this guy views football as that, views Chelsea fans as that. You know, like, he's being brought in, not as a CEO of the football side, he's being brought in as a CEO of the business side of things. He, look, Peter Kenyon weren't a Chelsea fan, but he just got football at the same time as a business and as what the fans were, and he led us to success. And do you know what? At the end of it, you can look at what, Peter Kenyon achieved and we did Peter okay. Was I mean, Pete, and then you can look at brilliant. what even like Bruce Buck did. He wasn't great, but he just got is that Bruce, side of things. Is, is, and Bruce Buck still, is Bruce Buck still with the club? No. No, no, no. 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 And even like, it, the difference for me is, is that I just think this whole ownership that we have involved now, it, no matter who it is, they just don't have the right idea about how the club, a club like Chelsea should be being run. They've bought the wrong club. I don't care what you say. They're trying to turn... They thought Chelsea would be this easy money-generating club and ultimately it's not. And they proved that by losing 90 million and they're only going to lose more money and they'll start to realise soon enough when the books aren't balancing out that the loopholes aren't going to be the answer financially. And the only way to subsidise these huge losses that Chelsea are now making as a football club because of their ridiculous spending and the way we've set up our payment plans, that we're not going to what, just spend so? money that we have. We're going to spend it over years and years and years back to these clubs in instalments. So we'll forever be having money falling out of our account for such a long time. Oh. The only way you're ever going to subsidise those guaranteed losses for the next nine seasons it is to have success on the football pitch. And I'm not some American billionaire, like, but I can tell you that an absolute fact, as a football club... They don't generate, like, look, they generate massive amounts of money, but they're not generating huge FTSE 500, uh, FTSE 500, yeah, 250 unit, like, You know what I mean? They're not generating money like those type of companies. They're generating money like a football club. They don't, they don't generate that much unless they're selling players or winning on the football pitch. You don't that need is, to. It's, 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 Chelsea is a, is a massive global product though. So they, they're obviously brought into that. Yeah, but Kev, it's still ain't, Kev, no one wants to sponsor us because no, no, we no, we're no, not no, on Champions no, no, League. No, no, no. Yeah, going off the score, okay, so just going off what you just said there, today I just read just a second ago, Jordan have been talked to Chelsea over a £60 million sponsorship deal. Today that's not happening now. Them, yeah, you but never that's know. only if we get no, that's on pause. That's the on league. Pause. As a minimum, in, as a minimum, which yeah, that's not. You think Jordan league. are going to sponsor a club that ain't even in the Champions League? <laughs> the only thing that and this We're is no lie, league. right? We are more than Premier League. Jordan and Nike are the same so company, don't be... Jordan and Nike are the same company. Jordan do you think Nike, Nike want anything to do with Chelsea right now? Do you think we're selling <laughs> shirts to people? No, if it's not fashionable to support Chelsea right now because we're crap, Chelsea, you've got to be winning things. It weren't fashionable, right, to buy a PSG top when Nike first got involved with them, like in recent eras. Then all of a sudden they started buying the big players and they started... Chelsea aren't buying the big players. We're buying players that have no hype around them whatsoever for fees that would suggest they have all the hype in the world. Like, this is a mess from the top to the bottom. And actually, you know what pissed me off so much? Sorry about swearing, but when, <laughs> Alex, when you literally caught Todd the other day after the game... And you, he goes, no comment. You know what? Make a comment. Say something. Give the what are you asking? Something. What, what are you, Alex asking? What, what uh, have you got I to say about the game? Him. Yeah, I asked him what he thought going, about no the comment, game. No he comment. No comment. Well, well, I, I, you, I guess you can say something. Yeah. have a bit about you have a spine have a backbone the club is in the biggest mess it's ever been in at solely at your company's hands. So make a statement. Tell us it's all going to be okay. Give us the solutions to the problems that you've lumped on every Chelsea fan's 
plate and the problems you're going to lump on them more as you up the season ticket prices as people question whether or not they can afford to support their club that they've loved their whole life when the club's results on the pitch aren't motivating enough to continue paying outrageous amounts of money for football tickets for quite honestly shit football like it's, it's that, let, me, let, let me let me let me ask you daniel listen everything that you're saying i completely agree with it but just to play devil's advocate right do you think that it's too late to rectify the mistakes that they've made? Ah, no, 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 no way. You know what? Right? Imagine Top Bowley comes out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I'm saying all the all the all the mistakes they've made. Do you think? Do you think it's too late? Hold on, hold on. No. Even though, even though, even though, right? Rolling above the image with all those trophies, for all their success, for all the glory days to this club, yeah, over the years, he made the number. Of mistakes throughout his time, so of course these new owners can get it right. They're only a year and a half into the into the their, their reign, so he knows. Don't forget, like yeah, Roman put, um, yeah, Roman put like uh, Avram Grant in in charge when Mourinho you go. like flat there out go. refused. Yeah. Roman AVB. bought players. Do you know what I mean? Billy Roman Piscolari. bought Shevchenko. Yeah. And, 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 and the reason Mrs. Yeah. Happy, and it's so like reason, that, like. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking that, boys, yeah, is because right now, again, they've made a lot of mistakes, yeah, that they need to rectify, okay? But in life, just think about it, in life, you learn from the mistakes that you make, right? Yeah, so we have so. to just... We, we yeah, exactly, to exactly. That's my next point, Alex. We have to hope that these guys have seen where they've gone wrong in terms of, you know, trying to fast-track things, thinking about multi-club models and that, when we need, we haven't even thought, sorted out yard first. We haven't there sorted out go. home first to be thinking about multiple clubs. You know, buying young players that are too raw, like Mudrik and Madwaki. I like their potential, but they're too raw. Yeah, if you're going to buy me young players, I've said this on my channel as well. If you're going to buy me young players, go buy me polished young players like Cole Palmer, like Gusto. These sort of guys, they're the young players that I want and to add experience to that, right? But these mistakes that they've made this season are very, very clear to see. So going forward now in the summer, if they carry on doing it, then we'll know what they're about, bro. We'll know that when Todd Bowley was talking before, it was all just for talk and, and they sold us a dream, yeah. right? But yeah. if they come out and we're seeing a big difference in, 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 in the way they're looking at things, it's not no 25, uh, sorry, 22-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 19-year-olds and whatnot. They're trying to bring in seasoned pros. Then I'll be like, okay, cool. Do you know what? They, they've learned from the mistakes that they made. They're trying to change now. But if I keep seeing no, the same thing, winners, bro, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to crash it on them. I, bro, I'm... I'm just, I'm just saying this is what they need they're to do. They're about money. Just... They're about money. Full stop. Oh, yeah, they're ain't even a, they're about yeah, money, then second, they're about success. They mm. ain't bothered about success, man. The only reason but, they'll be but... bothered about success is, like I say, mm. in two, three years, when they realise their account balance is looking frighteningly low and they can't pay the debts that they've built up at the club now because we're a club with very little debt. We're now Dan, drowning in it. But, Dan, but that's what I'm saying, bro. Dan, Dan, to, 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 stop us, to stop us from getting well, we didn't, Kev. We owed, like, a billion to Abramovich, but he wrote it off. But Dan, this is over the point. a billion, mate. One, one one point five. But Dan, this go. is what I'm exactly. saying, bro. To, he to wrote stop... it off, man. Bro, Dan, everything that you're saying, bro, I, I, I'm, I'm with you, bro. What I'm saying is to stop us from getting there. This is what they need to do in, in order to stop us from getting there, right? And, and right now, I, I get it, bro. You're emotional. I'm emotional about it. I hate where we are right now as a club. Mm -hmm. But end of the day, we have to hope as fans that these lot can clearly see where they've gone wrong and put it right going forward now in the summer onwards. But you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't we, have, we have to hope, but it's not, it's not too far gone. It's, it's, but the thing is, no, I don't think like, it is. I don't think it's too far gone either. It's, it's not, it's not too far gone because let's not act as if there isn't. I can't see where the Dan's coming from, though, to a sense where when you see the patterns of what these guys are doing and the attitudes they've got towards the club, like they may not change, but you just gotta have belief. I'm skeptical that, too. You know? I'm skeptical. No, no, what I'm is saying there, what is there to believe on? Like, exactly, Dan. That's where that's where I, I agree with you because we don't believe in Poch because all he's showing us is fuckeries. Dan ain't gonna believe in the owners because majority of what they've done is fuckeries. And I'm, I'm I feel the same like Dan right now. I'm very skeptical. We need bro. to be we need I'm to be skeptical. given something to believe in, right? Like if if you told me that in five years time. Cole Palmer's going to be one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. I'd believe that because I've seen evidence this season to suggest that he could be on that path. If you told me in five years' time Pochettino's going to have won three Premier Leagues for Chelsea, I wouldn't believe you at all because he's shown me no evidence. If you told me in five years' time that Todd Bowley is going to have a Chelsea squad that's getting 100 points in the Premier League like he promised every Chelsea fan when he started oh, building this 
shambles of a squad that he's built. I wouldn't believe it. And I didn't believe it at the time (laughs) because the players we were buying was on what evidence? Him as the sporting director that's never, ever, ever been involved in European sport. I think it's a shambles. And I'll tell you what, if I'd have been down on the Fulham Road the other night when I saw him walking past, I would have told him what I thought. See if he said no comment about that. (laughs) <laughs> Joke, yeah, yeah. Honestly, no, I, 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 I will, I will I come say, and say something. I'm with you. I'm with you. Balls. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will say this. Yeah, the yeah, owner, I mean, like, hang on, I, Alex. I, the owner, like Abramovich, right? That that era's gone. That's never coming back. We live in a world now where everyone has something to say. Everyone's connected, and everyone needs to hear something back. The top owners at football clubs or high spokespeople at these football clubs, they're saying things. They're saying things that are connecting with the fans, telling people the direction they're heading in, what the model is, what we're looking to do, whether or not we're going to sign players at this age, this age. Look, I don't know, do a fan forum or something. Because if we finish two seasons in the second, if I load up Sky Sports on my app at the end of the season and for two seasons in a row, I've got to scroll to the bottom half of the page, then there's an issue. And he needs to come out and say, look, I bought this club off the back of them winning the Champions League the season before I arrived. And all of a sudden, we're 11th, two seasons in a row. I've spent a ridiculous amount of money and I'm going to up the season ticket prices. I've got to speak to the fans. I've got to tell them, look, this is what we're trying to do. This is our model. Like, If he turns around and goes, look, I'm all about money. I don't care about football. Then I'll go, do you know what? We're fucked for 10 years, but fair enough. At least he said it. Because I'm fed up him giving us false hope. Yeah, they will never say that. They will never. Of course they won't, Alex. But at least give us an idea of where he wants us to head. Well, if you turn around and said I'm washing money because I'm laundering it, I wouldn't be shocked. (laughs) Right? Um, No, I mean I understand where you're coming. By the way, Dan, I actually agree with pretty much everything you're saying. Um, But first, first point I'll make is just just addressing when I actually spoke to him. Um, I I I understand why he's doing it. He's he's obviously been told, you know, this is PR, right? Bodie doesn't give a fuck. Somebody's told him, don't speak to these channels, don't say these things, right? I met the guy when he first took over uh, after the Wolves game. That was the first game since Bowley took us over. You know, I, I took a picture of him, I shook his hand. He was very friendly. Um, he had no security whatsoever. Um, and then I met him again in Salzburg with Egg Barley. And I chatted with them for about 10 minutes. You know, I had a really good chat with uh, Bowley. What did you say, to go out? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is when Potter, Potter was in by that point. Um, oh, right. Yeah, so, yeah, true, actually, true. You know, I, I, I basically asked them to give the channel a shout out. Higher Egg, Barley, <laughs> Egg, Egg Barley was the one filming. Um, Bowley was the one on camera. But it makes you Fair understand enough. the dynamic now. Egg Barley doesn't want to be in, on camera, um, yeah. which then goes on to what we spoke about last episode. He's actually the one really uh, with, with the control. And I actually think that I would go as far to say um, and I'm not, I'm not um, giving Bowley, you know, I'm not, I'm not letting him off the hook. But I think that Egg Barley and Clearlake are more driven financially than Bowley, um, based on what I've seen recently with the reports. But Bo- Bowley doesn't want to sell after ten years, from from what I'm hearing. Um, I think Egg Barley, Egg Barley, and uh, I can't even remember his name, Feliciano or something. I, I mm. think that the way they speak about the club is a fucking disgrace. And, I've, and this, I've watched... and this, this as well. Don't forget, he's on a thirty point five. This is a different one, you know. Whatever. This is is partnered with Bowley, um, and I think that. Yeah, but listen to how he speaks about his well, granddaughter's toy. Yeah. Well, that could come I, I, across I'll in the wrong way, you. actually. But you know what I, I mean. I haven't, I haven't actually <laughs> heard this say anything. Um, so I can't really speak about. Oh, that, I have. I'll send it to you, Alex, Barley. after the after the pod, man. Please I'll send do, you. Mate. Please do. But you know the way Egg Barley speaks about it, and and I watched a, it was some conference in America. It was Egg Barley, um, three other guys, and and they were also American investors. They were with Milan, AC Milan, because they've got new investors. And they fucking talk about it like a product. And I think it's horrible, mate. And I think Bowley, to an extent, you could say a similar way, but he, he's much better with his words. Um, you know, I think that he does believe in that togetherness, that fan experience. Um, and I think that, honestly, I think that Bowley does want success. You know, if you actually look at what he was looking to do, he wanted to bring in Neymar. He wanted to bring in Ronaldo, big names. And actually, then you've got Egg Barley who's going, fuck that. I want young players that are going to go and make me money. So I think that a lot of the things that we heard with the windows would have been uh, Bowley trying to do things. But again, the stake's not big enough, right? 13%, you don't have the pull. 60% is going to win every single time. Um, so I think that really we need to start talking more about Egg Barley and Clear Lake and that side of things. 
ultimately Burnley's just the face, you know. He does have control and power, but it's a barley, you know. And if you compare the two, and I've met them both multiple times, I've seen them both multiple times. Bowley has a willingness to speak with fans. He has a willingness to take pictures. Not anymore, not anymore, because he would have done it. He takes pictures. He takes pictures still. That um, ain't I ain't speaking, I though, is it? Like, look, look, look. But let me just finish my point. And and he will interact. He was at the CPO uh, lunch this year. You know, the Chelsea picture owners. Abramovich never went to that. You know, so that I give Bowley yeah, credit. Because that's for because that. Bowley has an interest in trying to buy every pitch owner out of their share so he can move the ground. That won't happen. I promise you it won't happen. Well, it won't happen because the pitch owners won't won't sell, no. but that is what Bowley's interests are. Is. Their worst yeah. nightmare is the CPO. But my point is this, and then you look at Egg Barley, where you don't really see him do anything. I, I saw him after one of the games. I, think I don't think about season. him. I don't he think ran, about him. He ran off, Kev, Kev. He people were asking him questions. He ran to his car to get away yeah, from what Fanta game was that, Alex? What game that, was that? that? That scares me. We were on fan cam together and he come running past. Confront the fans. Whereas I Bowley, like, I'll I was there. I thought I was there. You know, and, and, and when yeah, you're, running, and when you're running to your car, that means you've got something to hide. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why. Okay, hear me out on this, by the way. Hear me out on this. Why do they? Why do they? Why do they not just park under the stadium? By the way, why do they park so like? I don't understand. Literally where we film. Literally that. where we film. They expose game. themselves where we're filming for like a couple of seconds. I just I don't understand that at all. Probably doing it on probably doing it on purpose though, aren't they? To say hi, but well, we're not going to speak to you now. You can't just fucking. Oh, no, yeah. 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 Was yeah. Essien. Essien was running away as well. <laughs> trying to get monetized. Listen, guys. Nice, oh, <laughs> Alex. One zero five five five, mate. You want to trim that time out? <laughs> it's all good man well listen guys thank you all for watching um if you've been watching for the whole episode do let us know if you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made we had a really good debate about pochettino the players the club itself and uh, a couple of transfer rumors as well if there's anyone you want to see at chelsea comment down below who you want and if you want to sell anyone let us know as well um if you haven't already subscribed please do and we will see you in the next episode.